Right at the top, I need to say this is not a video for how to handle chronic anxiety. If you feel like anxiety is something that seriously affects your life, you should contact a professional. I am not a professional. But if you are a writer that occasionally encounters bouts of anxiety that keep you from writing, then this is the video for you. So first, let's talk about sources of anxiety. Aside from chronic anxiety, most forms are situational. Something about where you're at or what you're doing is unsettling, also known as a trigger. And the writing process is filled with anxiety-inducing triggers. Writing puts what's going on up here out there, and that can be scary. It gives people the ability to judge your inner thoughts, which are usually reserved for you. If you're an anxious person, you've no doubt been told by someone, hey, don't worry about it, which is hilariously useless advice because I wouldn't worry about it if I was capable of not worrying about it. The other kind of advice is actionable advice, and that's what I'm going to share. This breaks down into two different parts dealing with anxiety in the long run, and what you can do to help in the moment. Let's talk long-term solutions. A common source of anxiety for writers is not knowing how to precisely put their ideas from their head onto paper. This is more common for new writers because it's a skill that has to be cultivated. We've all been there. Inspiration strikes, you run to your computer, you write, 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 and then you read it, and it's not that good. In my head, I thought that was really, really cool. First of all, I hope you know that you are not alone in this. It even happens to experienced writers. Ideas and emotions can be hard to transcribe, and the skill to precisely convey what's happening up here can take years to cultivate. This is something that comes with a lot of time and practice, and is the reason that every famous author's main piece of advice isn't write from different perspectives or use a Pomodoro timer. The advice they always give is read and write. A lot. You need to shift how you see yourself. You are not a writer. You're a student. I'm a student. We are all students and will remain so until the bitter end. You need to write as much as possible to learn the fundamentals. That way, when the ideas come to you, you can perform alchemy on the page and turn emotions into words. But even with all of that practice and experience, I don't think any professional writer would call their first draft perfect. A lot of magic happens in the edit, and we tend to be hypercritical of ourselves. If you frequently find yourself going back to read your work, feeling bad about the art you've created, and scrapping it all together, it might be good to get into the habit of not reading your work until it's finished. That way, even if it's bad, you'll come out with more experience than you had before, and you will have learned from it. It's better to write 50,000 words that aren't perfect than it is to not write at all. While feedback is one of the best ways to master the fundamentals, it also helps you deal with another form of writing anxiety the fear of sharing. Like I said before, writing is personal. It takes what's happening up here and makes it free for everyone out there, and that is incredibly vulnerable. When someone judges your writing, it feels like they're judging you, and that fear can be paralyzing. Even for me, I shared the scripts for all of these videos with other people here at the company. It's always hard to hit that share button, but it's gotten easier with time. Finding a group of people that you trust to share your work with will help you work through your fear of sharing your work. You'll start to expect what kind of feedback you'll get from the different people. I know Jackson will tell me what jokes work and which ones don't, and I know Jason will dig up every tiny grammar mistake. I know what I'm gonna get before I get it, and that makes me less anxious. Now it's easier to share my writing with other people because once you share so much stuff, you get used to the feeling of sharing. You become less protective about the things that you write and take criticism less personally. Okay, so this is a topic I will definitely cover more in future videos, but I think it's a great goal to strive towards for eliminating stress and anxiety. The flow or the zone or whatever you want to call it is a mental state while writing where the words start to pour out of you. You aren't really thinking about what you're writing anymore, and it more or less just happens. If you are a newer writer, this might sound insane to you. So I need the veteran writers watching this video to comment down below so the noobs know that I'm not being crazy. Okay, but what does this flow state have to do with stress and anxiety? The flow state is a place where you are so in the zone that there isn't time to overthink and become anxious. 
It's almost zen-like. The term was coined by psychologist Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, who was enamored with the way that artists lost themselves in their work. The words just fall out of you instead of sitting at your desk and thinking and typing and backspace and thinking and typing and rinse and repeat. Overthinking is the enemy of our rough draft and the source of anxiety. We want to do everything we can to keep from overthinking and to get us into the flow state. I think there are two big factors here, distractions and self-editing. Foremost, you need your workspace to be clear of distractions. Get rid of anything that will pull you out of the flow state. Come on. You've got to feel the flow. This will be different for everyone, so you'll have to pay attention to what interrupts your writing time. But from my personal experience, here are some actionable steps you can take. One, put your phone in another room. Easy enough. Two, get your snacks ready beforehand so that you don't get up while you're writing and go stare longingly into the pantry. Three, pick the right music, something repetitive and without lyrics. Four, use an app that blocks other sites in your browser. Even just using your manuscript editor's full screen mode can keep you from opening a new tab. Don't open a new tab. Like I said, find what works for you, but eliminating distractions and unplanned breaks will help you get into the flow. The next big tool for finding the flow is not self-editing. Actually, this is a big enough topic that it needs its own title card. Cole, hit it. Learning not to self-edit is a big level up moment for new writers. Before I talked about the start, stop, delete stuff method for writing, and it is just painstakingly slow. If you are constantly stopping to see what's wrong, you are going to overthink it. And here they come again, here they come again. Don't look at what you've already written until you are done writing for the day, at the very least. Just think with your fingers and follow where they go, spelling mistakes and plot holes alike. Everything can be fixed when you actually sit down to edit, but there won't be anything to edit if you don't actually write it first. Okay, so it's not entirely actionable for me to tell you not to self-edit. You're still gonna do it. I still do it. But the more aware of it we are, the less we will do it. So we need to stay vigilant. I talked about writing sprints in my last video, and those are great practice for not self-editing. Set a timer and don't let your fingers leave the keyboard until it's up. And don't you dare touch that mouse. I used to have a sticky note on my computer monitor that said, don't stop. And that was really more intimidating than it was helpful, but maybe that'll work for you. Just be nice to yourself though. Most of what I've talked about so far are big ideas to strive towards, but what can you do to alleviate stress and anxiety in the moment? When this video comes out, it'll be right at the beginning of NaNoWriMo, so tensions may be high and you don't have the time to cultivate all the advice I've given throughout this video. What you need is a coping mechanism something to help alleviate stress and anxiety in the moment. Like I said before, this is something that you will have to play with. I don't know what relaxes you, but I can tell you what works for me. First, I like to take walks, simple but effective. Moving and getting away from the screen can help you break out of anxious and recursive thoughts. The walks don't even have to be super long. I usually go for about five or 10 minutes, and I usually try and get up at least once an hour, even if I'm not feeling anxious. Second, do something tangentially related to your writing. I suffer from what I like to call busy dad syndrome. If I am doing something other than what I directly set out to do, I feel like I'm procrastinating, which makes me anxious. My brain needs to feel productive to not feel anxious. So I like to trick it. Whenever I take an extended break from writing or if I don't write on a day that I plan to write, I still try to do something that's related to my writing. Since I like writing sci-fi fantasy, this usually takes the form of world building. I like to sit and figure out the details of my world and it feels productive even if I'm not writing in the moment. Recently, I've also really enjoyed making maps. It feels like I'm exploring my world and learning more about my story. Note that you should not replace writing with world building, an ailment known to many as world building disease. My last piece of advice is similar to the first two, but it's really helped me a lot lately. Think to yourself, when do you have your best ideas? If you're me, it's when you're trying to go to sleep at night, which is obnoxious because then you have to get up and go write down your idea and end up losing sleep over it. I suggest what I'm tentatively calling thinking breaks. The idea is to get rid of all distractions and make space for thinking about your story, like when you're trying to go to sleep at night. Here are my rules for thinking breaks. First of all, no phone. Get that thing away from me. 
Second, lay down and get comfortable so that you're not focusing on your body. And then finally, turn the lights off if you can swing it. Seeing things can distract you, and we wanna make the perfect space for thinking about our story. I'm essentially telling you to go to bed in the middle of the day or whenever you take a break from writing, and it may sound insane, but it is so useful. Take this quote from psychologist Sian Bylock's book, Choke. In fact, even walking away from a problem for a few minutes can help folks find the most appropriate solution. This incubation period helps people to let go of their focus on irrelevant problem details and instead think in a new way or from an alternative perspective, producing an aha moment that can ultimately lead to success. Deep thinking should not be done in front of a screen with that blinking cursor in front of you. Get away and find a place where your mind can wander. That's where you'll be able to relax and have new ideas come to you. Like I said, these are coping mechanisms that work for me and maybe they won't work for you, but I think they're a good place to start. My last piece of advice is to avoid anxiety triggers. It sounds obvious, but I can't not say it. Much like how you need to stay aware of when you're self-editing, stay aware of what triggers your anxiety and work to avoid it. They can be tricky to find if you're not paying attention. For example, I can't write if I have a tab open where I can see notifications. I don't know why, but seeing a notification up there makes me feel stressed. I feel compelled to click them, which distracts me, which is why I tend to write in full screen these days. F11 is your friend. Another example for me is that I cannot write when there are other people around. I've tried before and every time it's super unproductive. It feels so vulnerable and it's just weird to do around other people. I wish I could write around my friends, but ain't that just the way? Writing stress and anxiety is something that happens to all of us at some point in time in this community. But there are things we can do in the long term to help prevent future anxiety, and there are things we can do right now to help calm ourselves down and keep writing. Let me know in a comment if you have a coping mechanism that works for you. Thanks for watching. Whoa! Hello, I am Levi Johnson, and I am here today to tell you all about Campfire Blaze. If you're watching this when this video comes out, it's NaNoWriMo. And here's the thing about NaNoWriMo. We have a contest. We have a contest for NaNoWriMo. We are willing to foot the bill of up to $3,000 in publishing services if you use Campfire Blaze to plan your story for NaNoWriMo and you complete NaNoWriMo. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta write the book. You gotta write the book in order to publish it during NaNoWriMo. You gotta write it. You gotta write the whole thing. That's right, that's $3,000 for editing, beta readers, ISBN number, cover art, all the different things, you, anything you need. Anything you need to make your book a reality. Look at this. You could be here with all these, your name could be with all these other books. Campfire Blaze has all of the tools you need to plan your story today. Timelines, character sheets, and other stuff probably. One of the best things about Blaze is that you don't even have to, you don't have to pay to use it. Every module has a free version. Campfireblaze.com, try it. Link in the description. Link to the contest in the description. Do it, do it. Keep it together. Keep it together. Keep it together. Oh, God. Hey, make sure you like and subscribe if you like this video. Sharing this video also helps out the channel a ton. Check out our podcast. We have a podcast. We have four or five ep we have episodes out. So go check out the podcast. This video was written by me, edited by Cole Field. Jackson Dicker is our executive producer. Thanks again for watching. You're the best.